three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. This is The Real Pineapple. This is your humble host, Hunter, here. Hope you're all having a great day so far whenever you listen to this. So, uh, I am off today. This is a Monday I'm recording this. And I thought, oh, man, cool. I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get real high. I'm going to rewatch The Batman uh, because that's on HBO Max right now, if you have not seen it, which you should. And I went, yeah, hell yeah, that's going to be my day after I got my taxes done. Uh, it is tax day, everyone. Get your taxes done if you haven't yet. And then Marvel, which let's keep in mind, Thor Love and Thunder comes out in July. So we're, what, six weeks, 70, uh, not six weeks, what am I talking about? Uh, like nine weeks away, roughly from the film coming out. And Marvel went, it's almost like they woke up and went, oh shit, that's right, we have Thor Love and Thunder coming out. And look, I've talked about this on the show before, how DC, you know, has put out trailers or done things that feels like to try to take away some of Marvel's buzz and vice versa. But come on, y'all. Like, this is clearly... Like, the fact Marvel couldn't even wait till tomorrow (laughs) to put this trailer out, they were just like, oh, the Batman premiered. All right, let's drop our first Love and Thunder teaser. And let's call what it is, man. This This is a great teaser. And I know this is not realistic because no film ever does this anymore but i would love if marvel could actually resist the temptation and not put out another trailer until the movie comes out again i realize that's a pipe dream there's no fucking way that'll happen but i would really like that because i like how there's a shocking amount in this trailer that the more i looked at it i went oh wow there's actually quite a bit that i'm noticing here but at the same time it's it truly is a teaser And I love that. I love the fact that they're not giving me too much. I actually kind of want to not know much more than this, but I'll get into what I saw here uh, in just a moment. But this again, of course, is directed by the man, Taika Waititi. Fucking love this dude. Um, Of course, Jojo Rabbit alone. uh, Of course, he did uh, Thor Ragnarok, which while I don't enjoy that as much as other people do, I think it's such a fun fucking film, and it's incredibly, uh, incredibly, pardon me, rewatchable. And Taika, Taika's been on a roll between Jojo Rabbit and uh, the Thor franchise, and then um, oh, he's got that HBO show, uh, like our uh, uh, the pirate show. He's got that show that's apparently really great that I haven't seen yet. Uh, directed some episodes of Mandalorian. Like Taika's Taika's on a roll right now, and this feels very much more in the vein of Ragnarok, which I would expect. This obviously takes place after uh, Infinity War. And so we get what I love about this trailer. And I'm just going to kind of just dive in here. But what I absolutely love about it, just to start off. So I love the fact that it starts off uh, from Jump. And this is a trend we're starting to get more in the MCU that I'm digging. We're starting to get more of the classic uh, Golden Age comic uh, comic book costumes and our stuff when you uh you know we saw richard e grant rocking the old school loki costume we of course got you know captain america rocking his uh golden age costume we got uh luke cage on his uh you know on the luke cage show uh showing his silver age costume like we're starting to see more and more of these costumes that let's be real are insane in the best way but that are nuts and that you would think could not be adapted in any way, state, or form <laughs> uh, in film. And the fact that we're getting that now is something I'm like, yeah, give me more of this. It doesn't have to be a whole thing or even show them in the costume, but even just these little glimpses that we're getting of it, I'm so fucking down for. And it's just, it's a cheesy thing, but considering Taika is really all about having fun, it's something that I go, yeah, this totally fits in with the tone already that you're establishing in this first trailer. So yeah, I'm really digging, uh, I'm really digging that they're doing that. Also, as far as like Thor's journey, he really has been 
the one who's lost the most when you think about it out of the core Avengers. I mean, yeah, Hawkeye has his trauma, you know, lost his best friend Natasha Romanoff, but I mean, he still has his family. Thor thinks Loki is dead, um, which of course we know he's not. He lost his dad, he lost his mom, Asgard got destroyed, uh, he got to watch Heimdall get killed in front of him, thanks Thanos. Uh, Thor has lost a fuck ton, and so I'm really, above all else, curious on how his hero's journey is going to be as far as him finding his, quote, place in the world or in, you know, amongst the nine realms. So I'm actually really, I'm really curious about how they're going to, where Thor's going to end up here. Because Hemsworth has talked about the fact that, yeah, obviously he can't play Thor for forever. But at the same time, I think Hemsworth is still, I think Hemsworth is still having fun with this. It feels like Taika has breathed new life into this character. Because, I mean, let's call it what it is. After, after Dark World, you know, that was really the first big MCU miss, uh, you know, uh, critically, at least, and as far as fans are concerned. And so the fact that Taika really came in and went, oh, no, 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 we don't have to be done with, you know, solo Thor films. I, I got this shit. Uh, that's a testament to him and just how great and talented of a writer slash director he is. So I'm really just curious where Thor's going to end up. Um, so, you know. We'll we'll see. Um, continuing on here, and I'm not going to go in order. I'm just going to kind of pick things out that I that I notice. So I do have to point out, since Loki has dealt with you know dealt with Loki variants, multiple Loki variants, and we now are aware that we're in the multiverse. I'm really curious because I feel like we're getting Thor variants in this. It almost feels like you can almost have to, and I don't expect the trailers or really any of the trailers to give any of that away. I think they do kind of want to hold that closer to the chest as far as it being a surprise because, you know, we, we're getting Multiverse of Madness coming out here in a couple weeks. We know we're going to get multiple Doctor Strange variants there. Considering we're dealing with Thor, it really would make sense for us to have variants there as well. So I think we're going to get some, and I'm going to get to... The big one I think we're going to get here in just, uh, in just a bit. So I love the shot where Thor plants Stormbreaker in the ground, like in the dirt. I love that shot because it harkens back to Thanos having the, uh, the armor, uh, almost like a scarecrow at the beginning of uh, Endgame. How he has, I, I love that parallel considering, you know, Thor used Storm- Stormbreaker to kill Thanos. And so that really could be him symbolizing just like i'm done with this because the voiceover we hear you know throughout the trailer is him talking about how um you know he's done with you know the superhero life and how these hands are going to be used to bring peace throughout the world now and no longer violence so that's a really interesting portion of the voiceover to have playing while he's doing that and i don't think that's by accident whatsoever uh one thing that i'm absolutely loving is of course thor you know he was bro thor last time we saw him at the uh, end of endgame and so you know thor's getting back into shape and so we're getting a classic training montage which i really fucking love that that's a fucking thing so i'm genuinely hyped slash excited for that um also the fact that thor is in like a bro tank and he's got a uh trucker hat on and it has the old 60s uh 70s logo uh for the avengers with um with i think we're probably say classic avengers it has that cross out it's the strongest avenger because you know that's always been a thing for thor he has to be the strongest avenger especially when he was talking to uh hulk uh slash banner at the, during Ragnarok, I love that they actually are calling back to that. Again, narratively means fucking nothing, but it's a cool little Easter egg for you if you've been, you know, paying attention because there's a lot of shit that they pull from. But absolutely love that subtle thing. Um, just shows that Taika just loves to stick these little Easter eggs in uh, for people to enjoy. And I really appreciate that, Taika, you, you brilliant bastard. So my big question, or one of the big questions I have, it's at the the 24 second mark where we see thor you know doing the whole montage that creature that's killed is that is that a celestial is that a is that a titan because that was almost my first thought is like we've seen celestials before but it feels like the mcu is really starting to expand out the mythology in general as far as magic and mythical creatures and things like that so if that's our first titan in the mcu um that opens up a ton of possibilities and potentially could introduce 
uh, another character that I will uh, that I will get to here uh, that I'll get to here in a, in a moment. But that shot in particular is something I'm I'm going okay. I'm paying attention to how that could potentially come back. Uh, moving forward in the trailer, uh, of course, the Guardians are here. Really cool to see the Guardians of the Galaxy here, or the As Guardians of the Galaxy, as Thor called them at the end of uh, Endgame. Um, of course, Chris Pratt back as Star Lord, Batista back as uh, uh, Drax the Destroyer. Everyone in the main Guardians cast is back, with the exception of Gamora, which I appreciate that they're actually keeping that consistency because it would be, let's call it what it is, very easy to just go well. Um, almost pull the uh, Fast and Furious with Letty, where she's back with the team, but she just doesn't remember who she is, and we'll just kind of fill in the gaps as the adventure goes along. I appreciate the fact that Gamora is still not a part of the team and off doing her own thing, because that potentially teases a potential team up with her and Adam Warlock against the Guardians, which is something I personally want for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, because I believe the team will look drastically different by the time we get to the end of Volume 3. Um... <coughs> Pardon me, as I lose my voice here. Um, Taika Waititi, of course, voices uh, Korg again. I am so happy he's back. That beautiful blue bastard. His new costume is fucking badass. And it's very reminiscent of the new of the new Asgard look. You see a lot of you see the gold in the belt buckle, um, the uh, the multicolor in the pants there. Here, uh, and this is at the 37, uh, 37 second mark that I'm referring to. Here's my big takeaway on this shot. And I bring up this shot in particular for a reason. One, I love the Ravager Thor look. Uh, wearing the vest, very similar to Star-Lord. The, uh, the shirt he's wearing looks like... It's kind of hard to sell, but the way that you see the uh, the big red circle there, it looks very similar to the book, uh, the drawing in the book that Jane Foster shows uh, him in the first Thor. So I think that's a t-shirt of the Nine Realms, which when you think about, if you zoom forward a little bit in the uh, in the trailer where we see New Asgard and how New Asgard is a tourist attraction now, you know, presumably they would have a gift shop. So, you know, so it would actually make sense for Thor to have a shirt of the Nine Realms as he's wearing that, which I think is pretty cool. The big takeaway, though, from this scene for me or this frame is that there's clearly supposed to be a third person here. They're pulling a, a No Way Home where, you know, where you see Peter going towards the Sandman and Lizard and all that. And it's just one. And just the way the shot's framed, you go, wait a minute, something's been removed. The big question is who the fuck is supposed to be there? So I've got two guesses. And... Either one of them is good, is I'm happy with either one. I think it's either uh, it's either Hercules, because as we do see later on in the trailer, it does look like we're actually going to be in, Olymp uh, in Olympus for a little bit, because, of course, we do see Russell Crowe, not his face, but we see Russell Crowe, in theory, uh, debuting as Zeus, which that'll be fun when we get uh when we actually get to that because if i can get me a a fight scene between uh zeus and thor please please give me that taika but who's there so i think it's either hercules which i think would make the most sense because hercules and thor definitely have a uh a rivalry just through uh you know mytho you know norse mythology alone but it could be going back to my whole uh variant theory it could be better uh it could be better ray bill that's the other one that would make the most sense. I feel like it could be either of them. I really don't have a preference. If it's either of them, I'm stoked. Or it could be someone I'm not even thinking of. But those are the two that spring uh, to mind. Uh, that spring to mind the most. Uh, zooming forward here just a little bit. I love the fact that at the forty, oh, look at that, the forty second mark. Uh, we see the uh, we see this boat being carried, and if you zoom in, those are goats. And tying back to Korg's new outfit there with the belt buckle, it's no coincidence that he has a goat on his belt buckle because if you remember from Norse mythology, uh, Thor actually has two pet goats, uh, uh, Tooth Nasher and Tooth Grinder. Uh, they're called something different in Norse mythology. It's a very complicated name that I will not even attempt. But in the but in Marvel continuity, they're called Tooth Nasher and Tooth Grinder. Fucking awesome. Love that. Um, 
very curious how much they'll go ahead and influence Thor because if you look at the 49 second mark it looks like he's on a boat potentially but he's opening the Bifrost so did Tooth Nasher and Tooth Grinder did they go ahead and get him to that boat is he using them to go ahead and travel throughout the nine realms very curious to see how they're going to be introduced and how they're going to be you know how much of a factor they're going to actually go ahead and play um moving on from that we see these uh, Uh, I mentioned Zeus earlier. I dig the fact that Marvel, I think just in an attempt to keep the shit as streamlined as possible, when we see uh, Zeus's thunder, you notice how the thunder and everything is gold. That very much ties in with Eternals, where, you know, the Eternals being Celestials and being gods themselves, their power base for all their shit is based, uh, is color-coded in gold. So... It's a very simple way to kind of tell us, the audience, hey, Zeus is on that same celestial plane as far as power level. So that's actually great. That's actually a very simple way to go, hey, this is how these powers work. These are how these powers work. This is why they're color coded. I love that. So yes, more of that. Keep it simple. Thank you, Marvel. Um, At the 52 second mark, just the scope you get of all of the people, all the gods there that Zeus is, you know, putting his hands out to and entertaining. And this is where I think it's going to be very fascinating because I could easily, because we know that, uh, we know that, uh, oh my gosh, I want to blink on his name, Christian Bale, that he's playing uh, Gore the God Butcher. And a place like Olympus, where you have... <laughs> We have all those gods just sitting there chilling. That screams a massacre. That screams an intense fight scene. So I'm really curious how Thor getting there is going to influence his journey because you could easily see you could easily see how um, how Thor would go ahead, go to Olympus, kind of think this is where I'm supposed to be, be turned off by it, and immediately go, okay, this is not you know the journey that I should be on. So. I'm really curious how they're gonna actually going to establish uh, that aspect as uh, as well. Um, last thing I want to bring up, which is you know the most uh, uh, the most obvious thing, um, the shot that we get at the oh I had it here at the 55 second mark. That shot is awesome right there because that is the uh, that's straight out of the comics. That's straight out of. Uh, Thor, God of Number, Issue uh, 3, where we see uh, uh, Falagar uh, killed, and that is the catalyst in the introduction of Gore the God Butcher in the comics. So it feels like like, uh, Taika is drawing from multiple sources, which... As you've, if you've listened to the podcast for any amount of time, I've always said draw from multiple sources. Don't just draw from run one run. And I love that Taika does that. So I'm very excited that this is a shot straight out of the comics. I wonder how early on this is and where this leads Thor moving forward. But love that that shot's in there. Love that this is one of the first things that we uh, that we get. Also, uh, just two more quick things. I love how we get just a little sense of where Star Lord is at mentally, where you know he's kind of giving Thor pep talk, uh, pep talk about how you know whenever you're lost, just look to those people that you love, and we get that great shot of you know uh, uh, Nebula, Karen Gillian, um, Mantis, Batista, Groot, and um, and Rocket. But again, no Gamora. And so just seeing that Star Lord is clearly in that place of, damn, I know she's out there and I have to find her because we're not the Guardians of the Galaxy without her. It's a very unspoken thing, but it's just a very subtle like, hey, this is the the headspace Star Lord is in. And also it leads to the humor where Thor (laughs) leans in the frame to try to go ahead and get in Star Lord's way uh, in his eyesight just because, you know, he loves Star Lord. And I, it's, (laughs) it's such a cheesy bit of humor, but that's humor that I absolutely fucking love from Taika, so again, give me more of that. Um, And lastly, of course, the big, the big shot here is 
at the at the 120 at the 121 mark we see a hand grabbing uh grabbing uh Mjolnir and also love that Hella of course uh, Kate Blanchett uh, who played Hella remember she broke Mjolnir at the uh, beginning really early on actually in Ragnarok but uh Mjolnir has been uh reconstructed or at least put back together somewhat I love that the cracks are still there and we go ahead and zoom in and we get Jane fucking Foster Natalie Portman's Jane Foster who looks let's just call it she looks better in the helmet than Hemsworth did like I love the first Thor I, I'm a huge fan of it but even like he's not wearing the helmet very long he wears that shit for like a scene maybe <laughs> but to actually have foster wearing the helmet or uh having portman wearing the helmet she looks amazing in it and it already looks better on her than it did on hemsworth i know they're both just as pretty as each other but that's something that i went yes 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 i am hyped that we're getting that and props to Natalie portman uh she definitely put in work those arms look fucking huge she looks in amazing shape uh the costume looks excellent um so uh, j- j- real quick um if you haven't read the mighty thor storyline don't read it before the movie comes out because it will spoil some shit but in short uh taika's already confirmed that uh jane foster's cancer will be a plot point because that is a plot point that is that's pulled from the mighty thor uh run uh with jane foster where she becomes worthy and becomes uh the uh a new version of Thor. So I'm really excited for this movie. This is uh this is Jan- uh, July 2022. I think it's July 9th or uh, July 8th. I think is when this comes out. So yeah, July 8th, I believe is when it's out. So I'm really excited for this, but people, what did you think of the first, uh, love and, uh, love and thunder teaser? Uh, were there any Easter eggs that you saw that I missed? Let me know in the comments. You can follow yours truly on the Twitter at J Hunter, real pineapple. You can follow Scott on Twitter at Nearman the First. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can find us on SoundCloud, Apple Google Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Music, and Tune Up, to name a few at The Real Pineapple. Don't forget to like both our pages on Facebook at Real Pineapple Games and The Real Pineapple. That is R E E L Pineapple. And don't forget to uh, follow yours truly on Letterboxd at uh, Black Shazam. And you can follow me on uh, TikTok at Black Shazam775. And you can follow me on the Twitter at J Hunter Real Pineapple. Uh, thank you so much for listening, everyone. My best and worst of will be out this week. I am so excited to get that uh, get that out to y'all, as well as reviews uh, next week for Ambulance, as well as... Uh, Oh my gosh, why am I blanking on the name of that freaking movie? Um, everything, uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. I am so excited to talk about that movie. But uh, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Take care of each other. Wear your mask. Get your COVID shot if you haven't gotten it yet. Stay safe, and we'll talk to you soon.